Now, if there's one video game series I enjoy almost as much as Resident Evil, it's Tomb Raider. It was one of those formative games of my childhood. It opened up a whole new world of 3D goodness at a time when I was fresh off games like this. And it really captured my boyish imagination with dreams of adventures to the far corners of the world, journeys deep into ancient trap-infested tombs in search of powerful and dangerous lost artifacts, and frantic gun battles against evil enemies bent on world domination. And best of all, your companion on this quest was a beautiful, smart, sophisticated, ass-kicking woman who was more than capable of handling anything that came her way. And believe me, I came Lara's way many times. <laughs> I can't overstate how important these games and their star were for the image and profile of modern gaming. Almost overnight, they took video games from a geeky subculture for young kids and socially deficient adults into legitimate mainstream entertainment. Games had become cool and sexy all of a sudden, and a lot of it was down to Tomb Raider. The series had its ups and its downs over the years as Lara was passed around various companies who all tried to put their own spin on the Tomb Raider formula before eventually getting a complete reboot in 2013 that kicked off a new trilogy of games. This prequel series would give us a more grounded, sensitive and vulnerable Lara, an open world game map with RPG elements for character improvement and core gameplay ripped straight out of the Naughty Dog playbook. I have to admit, the first game was a breath of fresh air in a series that had become kind of stale and predictable over the years, while the sequel teased the return of classic Tomb Raider without actually delivering anything. And so it was that I finally got around to playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider a couple of weeks ago. And once I finished yawning my way through the five or six hours of core gameplay that it actually offers, I was struck by an odd realisation. Tomb Raider's kind of shit these days. As fun as it was to spend 90% of the game doing pointless fetch quests for NPCs in a pseudo open world game map where the actual business of tomb raiding is treated like an optional side event, upgrading my character's skill tree when the majority of her new abilities have no practical application in the game, slogging through tedious stealth sections that depend entirely on memorising enemy actions and endlessly replaying until you figure out a working pattern, Having your hand held to such an extent that progress is literally just a case of following the next waypoint on your map, reaching a confusing and poorly explained final boss battle where you have no idea who you're fighting or why, and doing it all with a character who seems permanently overwhelmed and terrified by everything, even though this is her third major adventure now, well... For all the graphical flair, set-piece battles and exotic locations, Shadow of the Tomb Raider feels weirdly dull and unrewarding. When I reached the end credits, I found myself longing for a simpler, more focused, more fun and challenging gameplay experience that's actually based around exploring tombs. The kind that Tomb Raider basically got right with the very first instalment back in 1996. But drinker, you frighteningly entertaining yet emotionally unstable genius, I hear you say. You're falling victim to the dreaded curse of nostalgia, looking back on your favourite childhood games with rose-tinted glasses and conveniently ignoring their faults just so you can retreat into your increasingly isolated comfort zone and justify your growing hatred of everything outside it. Well, voice in my head, I decided to put that little theory to the test. Could the original Tomb Raider really measure up to the AAA titles of today's market? Or is it just a sad, dated relic of a bygone era? It was time to find out. So I dug out my copy of the original Tomb Raider and duly reunited it with my old PlayStation 1 for the first time in about 15 years. Then I found out the laser assembly was shot, so out came the PS3 instead. Go backwards compatibility! So for anyone who knows absolutely nothing about video games, Tomb Raider focuses on Lara Croft, a world-famous archaeologist and treasure hunter who gets recruited by a shady industrialist to find and recover the three pieces of an ancient artifact known as the Skion, which is believed to hold mystical powers. Lara's journey takes her from the mountains of Peru to Greece, Egypt and finally the Lost Pyramid of Atlantis. 
Your objective is to navigate Lara through a series of increasingly complex 3D levels, solving puzzles, avoiding traps and picking up keys that allow you to progress and ultimately recover the three pieces of the ski on. Along the way you'll face threats in the form of animals and human enemies that become increasingly powerful and dangerous, traps that can impale or crush you, plus environmental hazards like drowning, falling from great heights and incineration. You can even turn Lara into a gold statue at one point if you get a puzzle wrong. <laughs> Tomb Raider was a revolution when it first came out, because there had literally never been anything like it before. You were given complete freedom to explore large, complex 3D environments, and more important, you got to do it in a way that no game had ever tried before. Lara was deliberately designed to be agile and athletic instead of a big hulk and tank. She's fast and agile, she can leap long distances, climb walls, grapple onto ledges, and swim underwater. You can execute all manner of rolls, backflips and swan dives as you go, and the game really gives a good feeling of spatial freedom as you run and leap from ledge to ledge. My favourite move's got to be this. It has absolutely no purpose in the game, but it looks cool and I love the fact that the devs just put it in because they could. I also like the idea that Lara will give you little visual clues about the kind of jumps and leaps she can make, like reaching out for a nearby platform if it's within range. Tomb Raider demands tight control, accurate jumps and quick reactions, and it encourages you to work with Lara to make good progress. Get it wrong and, well... <coughs> This is a game where dying can have serious consequences for your progress. There's none of this autosave bullshit like you get nowadays, where death is more of a passing inconvenience than a genuine punishment. Tomb Raider was hardcore back in the day. There's maybe like one or two save points scattered around each level, but you have to trigger them manually and if you die without doing it, it's right back to the start for you. It's a game that teaches you to be cautious and smart in how you explore to think before you leap and consider whether there might be a better way to do things. Another thing I find interesting is how the original Tomb Raider approaches combat versus, say, the reboots, where some sections have you mowing down so many people, it reminds me of the Omaha Beach segments of Saving Private Ryan. But combat is much more restrained and limited here. Yeah, you have to defend yourself at times, but it's usually against animals that happen to be in the tombs with you, and there's not all that many of them. You can go long segments without encountering anything at all, not to mention they don't respawn so once you've cleared out an area, that's it, job done. Not to mention you only fight like 5 actual humans throughout the whole game and they're all treated as boss battles. Combat itself is completely different from the games of today. There are no melee attacks or stealth insta-kills here, you've got guns and that's it. You start off with a basic pair of pistols that don't do much damage but have infinite ammo so they're fine for cheesing weaker enemies. You can upgrade to a pair of magnums that are more effective, a shotgun that's powerful at close range but slow to fire, and the Uzis which are just awesome. Lara will automatically lock on to enemies, so fighting's less about aiming and more about staying clear of trouble while wearing down your target with prolonged gunfire. Just like World Traversal, the emphasis is on speed, grace and agility, leaping and dodging enemy attacks while keeping them in your field of fire, and it can lead to some pretty epic encounters. Truly, nothing sums up gaming in the late 90s for me better than watching a woman in hot pants doing a backflip somersault while dual wielding a pair of Uzis on full automatic. If you were a 12 year old kid back in 1996, pulling off moves like this made you feel like the motherfucking boss. Another thing I ought to talk about is the graphics, I suppose. Obviously, they're not exactly sophisticated by today's standards. Environments are sparsely populated, there's nothing like the kind of incidental details you'd get today, and they even make use of 2D sprites at times to keep the polygon count down. That is real, that's a thing which is in this game. But honestly, when you consider this game was developed almost a quarter of a century ago, it actually does an awful lot with very little, creating complex, interesting areas that are rewarding to explore. And once you get your head around the basic grid system that the levels are based on, it actually makes exploration a lot easier as you start to get a feel for the kind of jumps you can make and the platforms you can reach. 
Level design is generally tight and efficient, apart from a few long corridors and empty arenas in, in the early levels that could do with tightening up. The puzzles are inventive, complex and challenging enough to have you scratching your head without tearing your hair out, and each level usually revolves around a big central area that you have to keep returning to as you complete various objectives, so you rarely get overwhelmed or lost. There's a distinct architectural style and colour scheme for each area, like the caves, jungle valleys and underground caverns of Peru, the columns and temples of ancient Greece, the sand and pyramids and obelisks of Egypt, and the weird alien shit of Atlantis. Tomb Raider offers up a good variety of different arenas and environments. It creates a real sense of progression as you go from basic caves and valleys to more elaborate temples and coliseums. And unlike the reboots, the game's smart enough to move you on from each area before it starts to get samey and tedious. And sometimes, just sometimes, the camera will pan back for some big extravagant shot of the map and you can practically hear the game engine groaning in pain as it tries to shift so many polygons around. You've got to admire the sheer balls of the devs for trying to do epic shots like these though. And of course, there's that iconic Tomb Raider soundtrack. But again, everything is restrained and pared back. You get musical cues during important discoveries or tense combat scenes, but a lot of the game is pretty much silent. All you can hear is the crunch of Lara's footsteps on the ancient floors as she ventures deeper into the maze of rooms and corridors. This combination of large, complex levels, sparse enemy encounters and lack of ambient sound creates an atmosphere of tension and isolation where you're just waiting for the next trap or enemy to spring at you. You really start to feel like you're the first person to set foot in here for hundreds of years, like the salad bar in Pizza Hut. Now let's talk about the star of Tomb Raider, Lara Croft herself. Put simply, Lara is a piece of creative and marketing genius, a character that transcended the games and even the whole entertainment medium she started in. Over the years she's been in everything from magazine covers to TV commercials to Hollywood movies, and it all began right here with Tomb Raider. And because she's been everywhere, done everything, and been reimagined and rebooted multiple times over the past 20 years, it's easy to lose sight of what actually made Lara such an interesting and unique character in the first place. Now a lot of games activists, oh, I mean journalists, have put out literally hundreds of articles and videos debating whether Lara is a feminist hero or a villain, whether she's helped or hindered the cause of female representation in games, or whether she's just a big old chunk of sexual exploitation. But the good news is that those people are all idiots, and most of them weren't even born when Tomb Raider first came out, so we don't need to care what they think. The drinker will tell you the real deal when it comes to Lara Croft. And the deal is this. She's simply a brilliant character. On the one hand, she's the sophisticated daughter of an aristocratic British family. She's wealthy, well-educated and highly intelligent. But on the other, she's a tough-as-nails adventurer who's not afraid to get dirty and use guns as well as brains to get out of a tough spot. And what's interesting about Tomb Raider is that she's already highly experienced and good at what she does from the moment we meet her. She's already famous for her past exploits, which is the reason she gets hired in the first place. She takes on the job because it pays well, it represents an exciting new challenge for her, and because the mystery of the Skion piques her interest. She's not doing it to rescue loved ones or fight her way out of a deadly situation she's been thrust into. She willingly goes into dangerous tombs because she chooses to do it. She takes on the job that begins the entire story because she chooses to do it. She goes after her enemies when they steal artifacts from her because she chooses to do it. In short, original Lara is a smart, successful, wealthy, tough, experienced and fearless adventurer with her own powerful motivations and personal agency. And what makes her cool is that she's completely unapologetic about every aspect of her life and personality. She owns it all because she's confident in who she is and what she can do. She is the very definition of a strong, empowered woman. And she actually has a pretty cool and quirky personality in the original game too. She never really takes herself that seriously. She doesn't fret and moralise about the implications of her actions. She trades quips and sarcastic remarks even when she's at a disadvantage. Howdy. Afternoon. She makes humorous references to previous conversations when she encounters the same character in a new setting. 
What's a man got to do to get that kind of attention from you? It's hard to say exactly, but you seem to be doing fine. Well, you have my total attention now. I'm not quite sure if I've got yours, though. Hello? And she uses humour to undermine her enemies during tense moments. Even create new breeds. Kind of evolution on steroids, then. She's a character who always seems like she has a handle on the situation. Even when she's caught off guard or her enemies seem to have the advantage, you always get the feeling that Lara has something up her sleeve. The original Tomb Raider presented us with an intriguing, adventurous and deceptively complex character with hints of an extensive backstory and an eventful life well beyond the events of the game. She was interesting precisely because of her mystique. She was compelling because she wasn't defined by her past. The reboot series, on the other hand, is determined to give us every detail of Lara's life up to this point, stripping away the layers of mystery surrounding her and breaking down her adventurous persona to leave us with a mopey, frightened, guilt-ridden rich girl with daddy issues who always seems to be apologising and blaming herself for everything that happens. And it relies a bit too heavily on the idea that she's unprepared and out of her depth when she really needs to move on and toughen up after multiple adventures. It's a bit like the clueless new guy in the office who everyone tolerates because he doesn't know his way around yet, but if he's still screwing things up a couple of years down the line, he's gonna get his ass fired. The point I'm trying to make with all this is that I was genuinely surprised by how much fun I had replaying the original Tomb Raider and joining a more fun and engaging version of Lara for her very first adventure. It's a game that seems easy for today's theoretical games journalists to mock for its chunky 3D graphics and simpler level design, but honestly, I think developers nowadays could learn a thing or two from its excellent pacing, immersive atmosphere, restrained combat and clever characterization. I went into Tomb Raider expecting a horribly dated experience filled with clunky gameplay mechanics, frustrating puzzles and terrible graphics. But what I got instead was a fun, challenging and well-paced adventure with a great atmosphere. A game that stood the test of time way better than its rebooted cousins are likely to. And if, like me, you're kind of jaded with the action-heavy reboot trilogy and the wet blanket that is Lara Croft today, it's probably worth taking a little trip back in time to see where the original Tomb Raider juggernaut began. Now normally I would tell you to go away now, but in this case, I'm going to allow Miss Croft to handle it for me. Don't you think you've seen enough? 